So my name is Nick Tannehill. I work at Firefly Studios as business development and marketing manager. We wear many, 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 many hats. <laughs> um, and Stronghold Kingdoms is essentially a grand strategy MMO for mobile. So I like to describe it as a kind of grand strategy roguelike because your castle is always online 24 7 it can be attacked at any time and once you are attacked it's destroyed oh gosh so um, you go to bed thinking everything's fine yes well you, wake up the next you morning, can serve your defenses and things like that so it's fine but right. it, it's very roguelike and pvp heavy and kind of um you know hardcore in that regard nice. um, so it's kind of the situation where people people play it and people that do play it play it for like hundreds or thousands of hours wow um, so yeah it becomes it's your good. life how I, I like to describe it yeah. i know that some of you guys might have potentially seen an early build of this game before we saw it back at gamescom but you've been working pretty hard since then haven't you nick yep <laughs> Well, we've got like a development team of about two on this. Um, so we're quite a small studio and we have lots of different projects going on at the same time. Um, and basically, um, we're, we've redesigned the entire thing for mobile and now we're at the point where it's technically working very well. Um, but we just kind of want to add that last layer of polish before the game comes out and is into the hands of mobile gamers for whom polish is at the absolutely yes. you know, quintessential thing. Yes, um, <laughs> we do love our polish. We like to have a game that we can see our faces in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So what's changed since last time we saw it? So um, essentially we've um, redesigned the entire interface um, for mobile and a lot of the icons right now are kind of like a work in progress. Um, but what we're trying to do is basically surface a lot of the in-game politics and things like that that people kind of take for granted if they're like a high level player. But if you're only if you're in a mobile game and you're only going to give the game like 10 seconds before you decide whether you want to play it or not, um, you're kind of, you know, you're not entirely sure whether you, know, you want to see the end game stuff basically that you're going to be playing after 100 hours or 200 hours um, and we're kind of trying to get the world map to a point where you can see where all the factions are at play and all the kind of house fighting's going on um, and also get the world map to a point where it looks more like a sort of Crusader Kings Grand Stretcher style game rather than like a PC title. Um, so something that looks really nice and kind of mobile gamers can look at and go, I can see the polish is there, like, you know, and let, now let me get into the sort of the deep strategy side of things, um, which is kind of where our game sits, definitely at the sort of more hardcore end of the spectrum. Like, there's been a lot of talk of mid-core recently, and we're massive, like, Clash Royale fans that often play that game. Um, but it's definitely the case of Kingdoms where it's like, it's a hardcore PvP game. Like, there's no getting around that. Like, um, and the people that love it, like, play it for that many hours and get involved in the sort of EVE Online, Game of Thrones style backstabbing between houses and nice. factions and that kind Creating of stuff. this full story up. Yeah, um, and that's kind of what they what they really love about the game. So really since then we've been just trying to sort of surface that as much as possible and show people that um, as soon as they look at the game they can see where the different houses control the different regions of the map and where that stuff's happening and kind of give them an idea of what's happened in the last sort of 24 hours or the last week so that they can kind of see you know what they're going what they're getting into. Basically. Nice. So when when it comes to launch, yep. you're going to launch on iOS and Android. We are yes, nice. and we would love to do a simultaneous launch, but ah. we don't want to commit to it yet. Um, okay, fingers crossed. Because we had this thing where like we announced the iOS version because we weren't sure about Android, and then everyone was like, "I want an Android version." So we're like, "Okay, well, we'll announce an Android version," and then they went, "Windows version." And we we're like, "No, nope. <laughs> just just the first two, just the first two. But um, a lot of our Poor players Windows are from like Germany and Poland and Russia as well, where yeah. Android is like. Huge, so. I know Android doesn't always get a lot of love when it comes to releases. Yeah, I know. I mean, we would love to do a simultaneous launch. It's nice. just like the only limiting factor is how small the studio is. Basically, we're only about ten people in London, so um, it's definitely that. Kind of and when you do launch, are you going to be free to play or premium? We are going to be free to play. Um, so the game is the kind of situation where you collect these strategy cards, um, and you can earn these through gameplay. You can earn through and uh, pay for them. Um, and it's totally up to you. And the way you kind of earn more cards is by um, uh, fulfilling certain like achievements and things like that and then you earn more sort of per day or per week um, but it's the kind of situation where some people at the top of the leaderboards have spent absolutely nothing um, so it's totally it's totally sort of you know free to win I like to call free it free to win yeah love it <laughs> so is there anything in here in particular that you think players should really be excited about I think it's just the kind of MMO side of it basically that um you kind of don't get a lot of times when you go into a world map for like a Clash of Clans style game, it's basically a static image with some dots and you just kind of follow a trail through that. Um, and that's great for those type of games, but for us, we want to bring like a proper MMO like overworld to mobile. So let us show you the um, the open world. Basically you've got here which is the UK. If you're playing as a German player, you play on a map of Germany. If you're playing as a French player, you play on a map of France. And then if you want, we've also got a European map 
for a world map as well. So um, that's kind of our main, the main thing that differentiates this from something like a Clash of Clans game. There's still the base building, the castle yeah. building where you design your castle. But there's more a sense of global scale here. Yes, awesome. yes. And it's, it's like completely live 24-7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PvP, hardcore. A world in your hand. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely cannot wait to see it when it launches live. Thanks so much, Nick. Cool. You're very welcome. Live. Thank you.